The first step to healing has to be the recognition that you need to be healed, the recognition that you need a savior, and that the healing will come not from your own hands, your own divineness, because you have no divineness. What we have is constant rebellion and sin against God, constant rebellion and sin against God. We need freedom in Jesus' name from what the enemy has in store for us because Satan has no problem trying to destroy us. This is going to be a very short video and it's going to be kind of like a prequel to another video um, about healing and um, humbleness, humility, because um, I just want to like give out these verses that talk about um, how we have to be as children of God because sometimes we feel like we don't need God and that is showing how corrupt you are. I know this because there are times when I have resistance of wanting him to be my Lord and Savior, wanting him to be the one who heals me, being the one who corrects me, being the one who fixes me. But I realized in the end of the day that resistance comes from the corruption and sin and the devil, right? The devil's oppression in my life trying to make me not go glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ, make me not increase in the knowledge of God and freedom in the Lord and um, in um, abiding with the Lord, right? Because if you aren't if you aren't receiving from Him, you're receiving from something else. You're operating in another spirit. And I feel like in this season or in this time, the Lord has been trying to reveal this to me that the answer to every question is Jesus, is a being in his presence. If you seek something so deeply, sometimes the best thing you can do is surrender your spirit, not your spirit, surrender yourself to Jesus. Because covetousness is very dangerous. Covetousness makes us constantly want different things, constantly desire to see different things. And we face away from Jesus while Jesus is right here trying to work things out even if it means in prayer that you're not like resting and trusting and believing in the lord and you're just praying for every little small thing sometimes it's good to pray like make your request known before god but understand you aren't the one who's finding the solution the solution is jesus your job is to bring jesus into a thing bring jesus Yeah, we need to be delivered from a lot of things, a lot of generational curses, ancestral stuff, um, in Jesus' name, freedom in Jesus' name, um, our own sins, our own corruption, um, our own rebellion. We have a lot to be delivered from, and sanctification is a process. So let's not be lazy with it, but with fear, right? With trembling and fear, let us work out our own salvation. Now, working out our own salvation doesn't mean we are Savior, but it means we cling to Jesus, right? We seek Him, and we want to make sure that the ground we're standing on is actually Jesus, right? That doesn't mean doubt Jesus, but what that means is understand, don't be content with the lukewarm life, but seek to know Him. Don't be half in the world and half in God. Don't put God to the side for a moment and choose to do things you know is wrong that's when you know something's not right when you are knowing something's not of god but you feel like it's right so you do it what's right is what god desires what you think is right is actually wrong you are not the 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 person that defines right and wrong it's jesus christ the world may say you can define right and wrong and guess where the world is going to destruction to hell and look how confused the world is today. A person don't even know their gender because they don't they feel different. And that in itself is a very spiritual topic because God has called us to be those who are made free in Him. So when you're not in Him, you are susceptible to feeling things that you think is natural, but it actually isn't. No, I said think is natural. You can think a thing, but it may not be right.
You may feel like you want an abortion, but that's murder. Just like you can feel like like hurting somebody and that's not right Right just because it hurt you doesn't mean you should hurt them and destroy their lives Right Doesn't mean that you should You know you have to really see things the right way This is not this is your life is not in your hands anymore. It belongs to Christ That's freeing to know that's not bondage, you know, that's freeing because now you know that you belong to the Lord. And not only does God fight your battles, but you're able to not go through so much consequences of sin, so much correction from God, so much walking through your mistakes, right? And those mistakes cause lack of peace, cause, um, take, uh, like, put, takes away your innocence. And what do we mean innocence is when you start dating around all the time, it takes something from you and it's corrupting you God has one for you and you're making yourself not even be able to be content for one because you're broken now and you're operating in a sin and you wonder to God why is all these stuff why are these calamities happening to me why am I meeting all these awful people I mean why are you letting all these awful people come into your life why are you pursuing them because you see how you are actually the issue and not God but then people think, oh no, that's hatred. That's not hatred. That's called being responsible. That's called operating in the truth and stop being a foolish person. To be wise. Right? We aren't called to be fools. We are not called to live how we ought, however we want. We are here to live how Christ wants to live. And be a light. God says, there was five foolish virgins, and then there's five wise. The five foolish virgins were waiting for Christ, but never got to meet him because their foolishness, right? They weren't preparing for what for for God. I bet they had time for everything else except God. They didn't have wisdom. You can have time with God, but it has to be heart to heart worship with the Lord. It has to be genuine. And there has to be a loss of something. You can't be a be into porn, be into all these different things, and bring in God, because then what happens is you are not fully surrendering to Him. You are enjoying in the things that Christ had died for us to not enjoy. And when you see that you are doing things that Christ literally had to endure pain for. And had to go on a cross for so that we might not go to hell because of these things. You have to see how, whether or not you're in love with the Savior or not. And even then, you may love the Savior and, and you may be like, ah, this sin is eh. That shows darkness. And I know this because I'm convicting myself. That there are times where I do that. And I have to check myself. I have to repent for my sins. And really, it's the Holy Spirit checking me. She, he knows that I'm doing something wrong. He knows that I'm transgressing. I'm doing violence against the Lord that I'm proclaiming that I love, but through my actions and my showing that I love him. So I repent, Holy Father, for all those times that I walk in the darkness, right? Just even though God had done so much for me. So you have to see that. That's why sometimes we can't have our bestie living the sin life and us feeling like we can hang out with her and then go to church because she's causing us to walk in all the things that God have died on the cross for us to not go to hell for. We have to see this. Like people sometimes will minimize this to the max. They will minimize this. Because it says, yes, love covers a multitude of sin. Okay, that's true. But who are we to pursue sin? Why are we pursuing sin when God told us to pursue holiness? You know what I'm saying? Like, when what I mean with pursuing sin is, don't say, okay, God, I have enough God time. Now let me go have some sin time. Wait, it's not love if you're not letting them uh, sin. So it's not love if I'm telling someone, hey, maybe this isn't right for you. However, I'm saying have wisdom though, because not everyone can take it. But 
I want people to know that, yes, everyone, um, because it says, do not throw, ah, do not throw your pearls to the swine. So God was saying, don't, because if you throw your pearls to the swine, they will rend you. They will hurt you. They'll turn around and hurt you. They won't thank you for what you did. Okay. So have wisdom. But sometimes, like, I feel like God has to teach me more about, like, So it's like, I don't know, I feel like, so it says in the Bible that we'll be persecuted for righteousness sake. Okay, someone asks you a question like, do you feel like this is right? Don't say it's right. Okay. Um, if you feel like they can't handle the truth, just be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Christian. I have my own values and ways of doing things. I, I feel like it's not right. Um, and that's just how I feel. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But there's a reason for everything that I say. And I believe in Jesus and I follow what he says. So I think that will be an all different topic, okay? I mean, there are other times. Because when Jesus sat with the prostitutes and the sinners, right? Because we're all sinners, technically. It wasn't because he was partaking in sin with them, but because he was establishing his righteousness, that those who needed him will turn to him and be saved. Okay? I promise you he did not compromise the truth. Hey, Boba, um, let me get... Oh, no, 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 licking my shirt. I knew! I knew! Look at this cutie pie. Okay. She's also teething, so her gums hurt. But um, basically, I want to end it with this. I'm sorry if part of it was unclear. Um, but yeah, I have been put, put in situations where it's like screamed at because I want to read the Bible with someone. And that's why I feel like when you choose your spouses as Christians, you have to really ask God to be Holy Spirit led. Um, because sometimes you want to do like fellowship with the Lord, not because you're controlling but because you love the Lord so much that you want to enjoy this time with the Lord with another person. That you want to just be in awe of the Word of God together. But another person can take that as controlling. So when you take that, when a person take that as controlling, you have to see, ah, they're not subject to the Word of God. They're battling. Right? Because we are meant to be, if we're not in control of by God we are in control of by sin we're controlled by sin not God we are controlled by doing whatever we want to do as long as we are in control let all the demonic sins come into my life I feel good but God called us to follow his holiness so the Christian want to bring all this holiness into their life and the other one want to bring all that sin and it really contradicts so I just pray for freedom from sin in the name of Jesus, that those who are in battle or are not subject to him will become those who are born again of God and have fallen in love with the things of God and reject the world for the cause of Christ. Not because they feel like, oh, I love the world, but I'm sorry, I need to follow Jesus. No, it's because I see what the world is lacking. I see in the Holy Spirit that the world needs Jesus. That this life apart from God, that's what I mean by the world, this, these nations apart from God is fully in rebellion. And it's like, every time I try to go that way, it's like, you touch the fire, like, ah, you touch that poison, like, or that thing that burns your skin, you're like, ah, I can't, I can't go into that sin no more. It's not right in my heart. I can't. 
this is not right. I need to go where my father is, which is holy, into the way of holiness, y'all. Isn't she the cutest? Okay. Okay, Bobo, we're going outside. So, um, I want to read these verses to really establish these truths to you guys. So, it says in, um, um, Luke chapter 5, and I hope this will bring illumination to you guys, because I know that even though we may be battling and we may not be fully submitted to him, there's a love for the word of God, and that will help us reject the devil and fall in love with him more. Okay, so it says, Luke chapter 5, verses, um, okay, but well, verse 29 to 34 so it says and levy oh uh 29 so and levi made him a great feast in his own house and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them but their scribes and pharisees murmured against the against his disciples saying what do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners and Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I'll read that again. And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I'll read that again. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees? But thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? So it says here that he had come to call sinners to repentance, not those who are believing that they're righteous in and of themselves, but they see their sin and they are repentant of their sin. Okay, everyone are sinners. Those who believe they're righteous and have no sin, yet sin all the time, are those who have rejected Christ and feel like they are God of their lives, which is idolatry and rebellion, right? Um, so... We could read all of Luke chapter 5. And it says also here, um, I think this will also help illuminate you guys. 1, Sam, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 to 25 says, for, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship, worship the Lord. Now, my focus in ver is verse 23. Okay. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion. Rebellion from God is as witchcraft. So if you rebel against God and you try to find healing your own way, this your own way, that your own way, it's witchcraft. Like, people are like, I'm not talking about, like, if you're sick, you want to eat, like, stop eating things that make you sick. I'm saying, like, hmm, using witchcraft stuff to heal you, like, stones, saying this, that, and the third, um, 
saying, I find peace this way when Christ is supposed to be our peace, when Christ is supposed to be our healing. It's very interesting. It says for, for rebellion is, I'm not saying don't go to doctors, y'all, but what I'm saying is, um, everything, let it be in the Holy Spirit, okay? Let everything be in the Holy Spirit. Don't even listen to my words. Listen to God's words through me and God's words to you. When you guys notice that I may be saying something wrong, pray that I learn. Because we're all susceptible to these things for we're growing. But I pray that we strive to be perfect in the Lord. Because it says, be perfect as I am perfect. And it's possible in His Holy Spirit. Because when we are dead and it's Christ living in us, Christ's light will shine. And His light is light. Okay? It's perfect light. So it says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So stubbornness is as iniquity, which is sin and idolatry. Because when you're stubborn and you're not submitting to God, that means you are serving something else. Something else is pulling you away, and you desire that something else rather than God. And I repent for stubbornness, Lord God. And I pray for deliverance from stubbornness in Jesus' mighty name. So it says, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And what I mean by stubbornness for me, I think it wasn't really like stubborn stubbornness, but it was more like, I'll be praying and God is just like, just bring me into it. Like, don't try to find the answers in your own means um, in prayer. Like, be like, oh, Jesus, I mean, just surrender and understand letting me go into something is what is the answer. Okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> that's how miracles work, y'all. That's how we do the will of God. That's how his presence and his protection, his perfection enter into a thing. So it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, which is the words of Samuel, right? So, because Samuel, the Lord was speak, speaking through Samuel to him, but he wouldn't listen, right? So I pray for that we hear the word of the Lord through others and also from the Lord himself and obey in Jesus' name. Because if we reject it when it's coming from the person and God is you're clearly using that person to bring the word of the Lord to you, it shows that you have a lot to work on spiritually because you can't let your pride come into that. We, as a body of Christ, help each other by speaking the word of the Lord to each other. And I'll read that verse next. So it says, because I fear the Lord, and I learn, that I learn by people all the time, by the Holy Spirit's voice through others, and also in His Word, and prayer, and worship. So it says, um, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Please don't put people above God, because He went from becoming king to being rejected from being king, because He wanted the people to see Him as the greatest. We can't let people who are those who need help from Jesus, just like how we need help from Jesus, be the reason why we turn from our God. They're as small as us. They're as much as needed for needing God as us. So let us focus on the Lord. Um, it says... Um, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 to 23 speaking to yourselves speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the, to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. It says here, um, let me read verse 18. Yeah, so it says, And be not drunk with wine. Okay, let me read, um, uh, I'll read all of Ephesians 5, right? But it says, I think this the verse I was looking for was in one of the Hebrews. Um, so it's Hebrews chapter 3. Um, 
Let's read chapter 3, verse 9 to 15. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with, this, with that generation, and said they do alway err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, lest there be in any of you an heart, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto, unto the end, while it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, while today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Right? So it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called, called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So sometimes um, what happens is like, that's what we are to like, um, um, like exhort each other. So when it says exhort one another, what does that mean, right? Right, that mean like, and I'll make a video on this too. It means like, um, to give warnings and advice, to encourage, to remind, right? To, um, um, yeah, we must exhort, edify, rebuke, and motivate each other in our walk with Christ. Because it's easy for our hearts to be deceived, right? It said it in this verse right here. Um, for, uh, well, because our hearts can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And when our hearts are hardened, we don't listen to his voice, right? It says, while it is today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. The provocation was the time where these people have the promise to walk into their promise to land. But they failed to be able to walk into the promised land because they didn't listen to God and they all died and couldn't make it in. So we all have to really open our eyes to the truth today, okay? That we have to hear His voice. We pray. I pray for us to all hear His voice today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And, um, okay, then let, we'll finish off by reading Luke chapter 5, which I left off earlier. So, Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Him to hear the word of God, He stood by the lake of Genesaret. Genes and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Right? Actually, um, instead of reading the whole thing, um, I might make this like a Bible study. I don't know. I'll read the whole thing, okay? So, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. I don't know for sure if I pronounced that right. Sorry about that. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. So here it says, um, let down your nets for a draught. Okay. So there's something very important. So a draw is the act of drawing. Um, um, and so I guess he was saying, um, 
like for for fish right to catch a lot of fish but I think one thing that we have to really um, signify here is he was trying all the whole time and he couldn't catch anything with his own strength he couldn't catch anything and um, when the Lord said put down your net now Simon recognized that we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing but he said nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net when we do things when we listen to God we will see fruit when we listen to God his word will never fail in our lives if he says something do it if he says let down your nets so you could catch that huge amount of fish and though you've been trying to let down your net you're different from God you will continue to try in a place where there's no fish and for that particular time but when God comes and he says put down your net you will catch fish if he said put down your net and you'll catch a lot of fish when you put down your net at that time you will catch a lot of fish Um, we can try all we can to, for instance, go do something, right? Because we feel like it's the right thing to do. But until God tells us to do it, we won't see what we need, right? If God says, do it at this time and you'll get what you need. You'll get what you need when you do it at his time. His time, his way. And it's not just what we think we need, but what God have told us that he desired to give us. If it's because of our covetousness and what we desire, what we want, we want a lot of things we don't need. We want a lot of things that don't belong to us. We want a lot of sin at times. So it's time if we want to really, um, people say I want to uh, glow up, um, be better, that's the way to be better. To hear his vo learn to hear his voice and have a new heart, a heart that waits for the word of God and does not, is not cut up, caught up with covetousness, which is idolatry, which is like the crazy like, and greediness. Like, he will help sanctify us from those things and help us be holy in him, right? And we pray that in Jesus' name. So, verse 6 shows what happens when you obey. So Christ told him, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help him, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. They had two fishfuls, two boatfuls, just by obeying God. So they went from having absolutely nothing, like they tried, they literally, it says, um, Simon said, they have taken nothing to taking two shipful of fish just by obeying God. So imagine how obeying, obeying God for our lives is beneficial to us, okay? When we are unholy, what God called beneficial, we may not see as beneficial for us. That's why we must have the eyes of Christ, okay? And it says here, And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. 
for he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. He did not expect that, and now he's like, he recognizes God's holiness, that God knows everything, that he is indeed God, that Jesus is indeed God. And now it's like, he's like, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. It's like he sees the sin and he knows that he's like, God can't be close to me. Like, look at what I have in me. Right? And so, for he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John and the sons of Zebedee which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Okay. Hallelujah. I'll read that verse again. Verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they, um, and, and we're talking about people, they're going to catch the people, right? And help them turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I pray, Lord, we be those that catch men. And that we catch an abundance of men towards you for you, Lord, that they will become one with you. That they will know the God who made them. And they will follow God every day. Enjoying and loving what is holy and despising the sins of old. Helping those people that are in the kingdom of darkness as in the darkness be saved and I feel like I wonder why I say kingdom of darkness I don't really like saying kingdom of darkness because I feel like I read that from like NLT um, and I think the King James Version says that they were rescued from the darkness into his marvelous light um, because there's one king of kings and lord of lords and that's God so I really want to say they, there are people in the darkness that needs the deliverance of God that need to know Jesus Christ and his love for them. So I pray for deliverance and salvation, Lord Jesus Christ, even for myself, that you remove every unholy thing from my midst. Hallelujah, Lord. Please help us be holy, Lord. God is good. We're not called to be part of the darkness. We're called to be set apart. From the darkness okay let's continue reading and when they had brought their land their ships to land they forsook all and followed him so they were able to see Christ through this through obedience to God and they saw when they obeyed God that what God said is true it's like they forsook everything they had to follow him like when you see Jesus and you know he's God they forsook all they knew his value like there's a rich young ruler that for money and goods and riches he did not want to give that up when God told him to sell those things and give to the poor and he turned from God and he didn't receive the Lord Jesus Christ 
but here you see people literally turned. They literally forsook all to follow him. And the rich young ruler and these people both did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. But it can show that, you know, like, there's a level of sacrifice that is taken. Um, that is, that is, that occurs, right? That when you put God first, it's like, they just, it says, they were like, it's time to follow him. He's our creator. He knows more than we do. And this is from an example of just fishing. He knew where the fish were. He knew there would be a whole lot of fish there. And it's just like, God is beyond, he's beyond our greatest imaginations. Because he's the one who even created something like imagination. Now let's read this real quick. It says, We pray for deliverance from the enemy in Jesus' name. And I'm probably start, going to start doing warfare prayers to my channel. So it says, um, And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of, le full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man. But go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he, with, he, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day while he was, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in to lay him before him and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilling with his couch into the mist before Jesus like the roof right they went to the housetop and let him down through the roof because they didn't know how to get to Jesus through the multitude. Right? Continue to find, seek Jesus. Because you will find him when you seek him. The man of leprosy said, if you be willing, heal me. And God says he will. By a touch, the leprosy was gone immediately. Woo, hallelujah. Immediately healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to see healing. Let us see healing, Jesus Christ. Let us see healing, Jesus. Heal the people on YouTube. Heal the people in our neighborhoods, our families, ourselves. Heal us, Lord Jesus Christ. Heal us, Lord, immediately. And according to thy will, heal us, Jesus Christ. So it says, and when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. 
So this is, says verse 19, you know, when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, so tilling his roof, remember, and when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee, because they knew that Jesus can heal. Right? So if we define tilling, right? Tilling is a plate or piece of baked clay used for covering the roofs of buildings. Um, yeah. No, wait. Tiling, right? Did I pronounce it tilling? I'm so sorry, you guys. Yeah. Down through the tiling. Okay, it's the tiling of the roof. I'm so sorry. I said tilling. <laughs> so it says, And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, He said unto a man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? You see, like, is he's God in the flesh, like, that's why he can forgive sins. Like, you guys just testified who can forgive sins but God alone. <laughs> but these are the ones that try to crucify him. So, guys, they're, mm -mm, no. It's just, like, it's just the contradiction in them. It's just amazing. And it's crazy because it's, like, this is why God calls some of them children of the devil. Because it's, like, they operate in darkness and deceit. And really, they were threatened by Jesus' fame and his power to do miracles as God in the flesh and because people were gravitating toward God and not them even though they were just mere people that act holy when they aren't holy like they wanted to kill Jesus um and apparently the violence in them increased whenever Jesus did deliverance like the casting out of devils um let's continue reading it says um, so he said, who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts. So this is, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason in their mind saying, who is this which, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? He literally can hear the thoughts, their thoughts. What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, Or to say, rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. I'll read that again. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins he said unto the sick of palsy I say unto thee arise and take up the couch and go into that house and immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God did you hear that and immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay. So, and immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Le Levi, L Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow him. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. They dropped the system of the world. They dropped everything. 
What would people see me as? My job, everything to follow God. God was above their job. And I feel like it's like, it's like literally he just, Jesus said, I don't think he was at his job. He was a publican, right? So he worked for the country that was ruling the Jews at that time. And he worked to collect taxes from his own people to give to this enemy country. So people did not like publicans. But God went to a publican and said, follow me. And the publican left all rose up and followed God. Yet the religious scribes, Pharisees, they were judging Jesus. And they were thinking less of Jesus than who Jesus actually was. Hallelujah. And I don't know for sure if he left his job, but I mean, if you're following Jesus now, it's like, that is your job, right? So I pray the Lord teaches me about that. Like, maybe he went, he was, went to his job and he ministered. I don't know. Like, but he followed Jesus. That's what matters, right? Um... So it says, okay, Luke 5, you guys read Luke 5, just miracle after miracle. Like these miracles brought glory to God. And I feel like that's really important. Miracles don't bring glory to us. It brings glory to God and it's a sign that he has sent us. So I pray for signs to follow the true believers of Christ. I don't have to ask for it. It will happen because Christ is faithful in Jesus' name. And he's in control. And he's the one who does assign wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. I just pray that we preach the gospel and truth. And we're in obedience to you. That we're able to have um, the undeserving. We don't deserve it. But we're able to walk in this sort of way with God. Hallelujah. So it says... Um, but they that are whole, okay. So let me read that again. Verse 27, and after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Le Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, froze up and followed him. So well, it is a receipt of custom, y'all. Let's see what this is. Because it's important to know the meaning of things. Because sometimes you miss things when you don't know the meaning of things, right? How do you not miss things? Know the meaning of things. So the receipt of customs is a tax imposed by the Romans. So he was on his job, y'all. So the tax, yeah, is it according to Bible study, www.biblestudytools.com, Bible study it says, a tax imposed by the Romans, the tax gatherers were termed publicans who had their stations at the gates of cities and in the public highways and at the place set apart for that purpose called the receipt of custom, meaning he was on his job. Jesus said, follow me. And he knew God was above his job. He knew God was above his job. And he worked for the government. He knew God was above his, above the government. This is not teaching rebellion and to leave your jobs. But when God says, follow me, do so. Because do so without hardening your hearts and not listening to the Lord. And Choosing your the government and jobs, ma'am and money, pe fear of people, or fear of lack of stability in your life, and rejecting God and hardening your heart and not hearing His voice. So it says, and Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. So Le Levi appreciated the Lord, and he ended up making a great feast for him in his own house. He, he was not afraid to bring people, to bring Jesus in his home, and bring a great company of publicans, which were those in his workplace, hallelujah, those in his job, um, those who were looked down by the country because they worked to give the country's money over to the other nation that ruled them, 
and also others with Jesus. So he had a great appreciation. He threw a feast, right? God, it says, a Levi made him a great feast in his own house. So he really was the one who to serve the Lord even in this way. But the, but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Well, these publicans and sinners know a little bit more about respecting Jesus than these. Okay, these the Pharisees, these people who are murmuring against God's disciples, so maybe some other more publicans want to follow Jesus because they just called, I don't know. But the point is, they might have also turned to Christ like during the feast, like who knows. But he was murmuring against the disciples because they chose to sit with these people. They, don't, they didn't love people, okay? They just judged them. So it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are, see, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often, and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bridegroom fast, while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment. I will make a video on this too. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent. And the old piece, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, The old is better.